What's going on, everybody? It's How To Tuesday. And, you know, cobia fishing is super popular, and it may not be any more popular than in Virginia in the Chesapeake Bay. And I always like to find people in certain areas, find out what they are doing, because a lot of times those techniques can be used in many, many other places. I've got Austin Hain, Fineo Sport Fishing. Austin, what does Fineo mean? Uh, Fineo, failure is not an option. I love it. I already knew what it meant. I just wanted you to tell <laughs> tell him what it meant, but I like that. I like that name. So you do a ton of, of cobia fishing. Um, I'd like to talk about like some really good take-home information and probably what you tell your customers every day when you get on the boat is, is like when you're going to hook a, a cobia, when you make the cast to the cobia, and what? how do you coach people in your area – uh, to actually hook the cobia and and you know do it in a way that that you're you're getting your hookup percentage to landing percentage as high as possible. Okay, yeah. So um, teaching somebody how to cobia fish is it's not like your normal fishing, right? It's it's sight casting, which is why I love it. Number one, but um, cobias you just fi- kind of find just swimming around the water in random areas, so it's kind of hard to explain. Hey, you're just going to cast a lure and catch this fish um so basically i started the docs on explaining this and this goes for just about all site casting is presentation is pretty much everything Mm -hmm. you know um the difference between landing five feet in front of a fish as opposed to bringing it six inches in front of his face uh, can make all the difference in the world um especially in cobias um with their there's a lot of boat pressure on them and they are very very and especially in our area there's every, every year more and more people are cobia fishing so i try to explain to them the first cast needs to be perfect uh you can sit on uh, a cobia and miss that cast and you can kind of tell that he gets a little funky he'll start going down about five feet popping back up and once he starts doing that your hookup ratio is going to go way way down so first things i do with my clients is to be patient because when you come up to a big fish, um, a, a cobia is a bucket list fish for a lot of people. So when they see these fish, you know, you can have the whole procedure down, tell them at the dock, but then they start freaking out. So it's my job in the tower. I usually have my customer at the bow. I, I tell them, hey, um, relax when we see the fish. I'm going to line you up for the shot. And when, you, when I tell you to take it or if you feel like it's the time to take it, take it. Because what will happen a lot is they roll up to the fish. And they just start slinging right away because if you hit them in the tail, you hit them in the back, you land to their side. It's the whole, the whole. It just, it just knocks your hookup ratio way down. So the first cast is is crucial. Um, not saying you can't get them on the second, third, but first cast is 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 about the most important thing you're ever going to do. Landing it right in front of the face. Um, I try to tell them to uh, lead the fish, of course. Um, so the fish are usually swimming about you know two miles an hour, give or take. I'm not sure exactly. Whatever they're they're moving. So you don't want to just cast and and land six inches in front of them. You actually have to land, you know, about 15 feet past him, crank the bait on the surface to him. And then here's the next um, pretty interesting part on actually hooking the fish is when you have a live bait, uh, which is what we normally use. We use jigs. We use live bait. Um, But this is live bait. Uh, This is only for live bait. I usually give my customers a live bait because that's your best hookup ratio anyway. Um, Once you're actually cranking the bait to the fish, once it's in his range, and I'll usually be uh, saying commands and all that kind of good stuff, I tell him to open the Mm bail. Because if the cobia eats it with the bail closed, a lot of times, especially an eel or something like that, they'll grab half the bait and they'll rip it off the hook. Um, And so they'll just get like a quick thump and then it's gone and they'll, they'll, they'll have no idea what happened. So... Uh, something that I do that's a little bit different, um, a lot of people just open their bail and let the bait fall. And in the Chesapeake Bay, our water clarity is not very good, two, three feet. It's very green water. So um, in my opinion, I don't like to lose sight of the fish. So when they open the bail, I tell them to pinch the line and kind of twitch the bait on top of the water, let it kind of do like an S kind of on top um, to never lose sight of the bait. Because once we lose the bait and the cobia, we, we have no idea what's going on with the bait anymore at that point. So um, that's another very important thing that I tell them um, that a lot of people don't do. And I, I believe it increases my hookup ratio so, so much more, especially with the live eel. Um, but, uh, and then about a three second countdown is about what you need. Um, but again, we're gonna be vis- physically seeing 
uh, the fish eat. So we'll know when that hook's in his mouth and all that kind of good stuff. Um, but usually after they eat it, give them the three second countdown. Um, then we close the bale, crank it tight, set the hook, and you got the fish on. Nice. Um, other than uh, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say the the probably the most important part there, maybe maybe somebody might have 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 missed it, is that when you when you get it into the strike zone, you're instructing them to open the bail, but also keep their finger on the line, right? So that you you're maintaining the the tension on the bait. But as soon as that fish eats, it's pulling across your finger, and now you've now you're now it's in free spool, right? That's how you're keeping the bait on the on the on the uh, surface. Yeah, essentially, you're just keeping that bait there, and you'll feel the thump of the cobia or see it. It's mm -hmm. gonna it's gonna be a nice whack out of your hand, and when that happens, I just let go of the line, mm -hmm. and that means he has it. But yes, you're uh, you're pinching the line with the bail open, so the second you feel the bite, you can give him a little bit because. Mm -hmm. Like I said, they'll grab half the eel a lot, and if your bail's closed, it's a vicious bite, and it just rips it right off the hook. And the fish is sinking to the bottom of the ocean, and your hook come back to you with you know no bait left on there. Right. All right, man. That is that is great, um, great advice that certainly is transferable to many other areas and many other fish. Actually, um, I mean that's the way that you a very similar way to to hook and sail fish in certain situations, and very similar to hooking lots of different things. Um, anything you can add to just just hooking up? To just hooking up. Um, so on on the live bait, let me think about that. What what would actually increase your hook up ratio on the live bait? Um, and so a lot of times uh, in cobia, they're they're like I say, they're kind of just swimming in random locations. When the fish eats and he comes at the boat, that's going to be pretty much your worst situation because you're not going to have a good hookup ratio because the, you know, the hook's pulling weird and all that. A lot of times if I see something like this happening, when the fish eats, I'll actually put the boat in gear and drive the opposite direction of the fish before we set the hook on them. Um, so let's say the fish eats and it starts swimming kind of just to the left. What I'll do is actually put the boat in reverse and right, and I'll just pull the line the opposite direction. So when you come tight, it's an opposite direction pull. Um, if they're coming directly at you, yet again, that's one of the toughest ones. And I'll either try to reverse it, but if he eats and he's right at the boat, I'll actually let the fish swim all the way to the back of the boat before I set the hook. Um, so to make sure I'm always getting the opposite pool on the fish. Nice. I like it. I like it. Okay. Well, that's, uh, that's fantastic advice that you could take out this uh, weekend and probably apply it somewhere, whether that's a sailfish or, or a cobia, if you're, if you're where they are swimming. Um, Austin, I appreciate it. Uh, how can people get in touch with you? Uh, the best way to get in contact with me is definitely through my Instagram. Um, it's uh, Instagram forward slash Fineo, F-I-N-A-O underscore live, L-I-V-E. You can message me there, or you can check out our website. That's fineosportfishing.com. Yeah, and I guess if you're on TikTok, uh, uh, right, I'm not sorry. I'm sorry, <laughs> not TikTok, Twitch. If you're on Twitch, yeah. that's your that's your platform, right? Yeah, so if you actually want to watch live uh, live Kobe fishing, which we do a lot in the summertime, we, we do live streaming of our fishing. Actually, you can ask questions right there directly and watch it be used. Um, that is twitch.tv forward slash Fineo Live. Okay. Wow. All right. Awesome, man. Thanks, Austin. I appreciate it. And we'll be back next week for another How To Tuesday. See you.